Welcome to Create Your Own Reality, a show about hope, inspiration, and encouragement. A program that will feature guests and topics that may inspire you to think about what is real and how you can create miracles in your life. Your host, Buddy Schlang. Thank you for joining us on Create Your Own Reality. I'm your host, Badish Lang, and today's special guest is Kathleen Bridget, a gifted and professional psychic. At nine years old, Kathleen was tested and accepted into a research program into children's psychic abilities held at UCLA, and by the time Kathleen was 13 years old, she received encouragement by mail from renowned intuitive and astrologer Jean Dixon. Our topic today is Taking Charge of Your Life, and then a bit later, we will be taking questions from our studio audience. Kathleen, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Badish. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. And I hope I'm able to contribute something tonight that might be able to help you in your lives. I think uh, she covered the important parts of my childhood. Other than something for you would be that even though I was born into a psychic family, um, my gifts were recognized as a toddler, and what that did was it taught them to teach me to accept myself and to appreciate who the real me really was. And even though you may not have had that benefit, it's never too late to learn who the real you is and to give yourself permission and blessing to explore that, to celebrate the real you. And we hope tonight to explain how different ways to go about that might be for you. Now, how it's going to work for um, our discussion is, and these insights, is I'm going to be uh, giving you some, some information and you're going to sometimes respond mm -hmm. uh, to what it is I might be saying. So it's just going to be a natural conversation that we're going to have. So the first uh, comment is we must give ourselves permission. Yes. To pursue our dreams, wishes, and desires and accept they will show up because we said yes. Yes. When we decided to come to this earth, we designed who it was we wanted to be, what gifts, what talents, what characteristics, what job we wanted to accomplish. And that's never too late to take up just because you may not have gotten an early start. It's never too late to take up that mantle and give yourself permission and follow that path. You can change your path. It's difficult sometimes, but you can do it. And so I'd like to really encourage people not to give up, to start exploring who the real person inside is and let that person come out. Okay, have you look at me. Yes. Uh, we block our truth by not stopping and asking ourselves the right question. I agree. Um, we sometimes um, go forward based on what everybody says we are about what we are capable of, what our role is, instead of asking us what it is that we came to do, what it is that's going to make us truly celebrate who we are. I think that blocking it does not make it go away. No, it just brings it up over and over and over again, keep you wondering what is missing in my life, keep you wondering why does this keep happening. Our bodies are always trying to get our attention, headaches, heartburn, shoulder, neck pain, any pain or discomfort in the body. In the body and in the mind. We also run into blockages there where things just don't seem to make sense. We can have back aches that are telling us we're carrying a load that's too heavy for us and maybe because it's not what we're designed to do. Our throats may tighten up because we're not saying something we need to say. Our body will speak to us if we'll listen. Also, uh, if we are in a, a circumstance, uh, a stressful environment, uh, we empathically can actually take on someone else's pain or someone else's discomfort and think that it's our own. But if we ask our body, it will tell us, yes. this isn't yours. It belongs to this last situation you experienced. Yes, as from childhood on, we learn to read other people for our own survival. Is mommy going to be angry with me? Is daddy going to? You learn to read them. We take that on ourselves. Yes. And we don't stop to decide whether that's something we're picking up or is that something coming from the true right. me. And so we need to sit back and think, okay, is this their issue that I'm taking on? Or is this coming from within me that I need to explore? Uh, the disruptions 
of the blockages. It can be physical and emotional, and they are uh, a natural body function. So God built in a system that we need to be paying attention to because the answers are always there. I know a woman who had a child that was having some problems, and she took him to the doctor, and I actually took him to the hospital, and they gave her some information, and she, in her gut as the mother, knew that what they were telling her was wrong. Mm -hmm. And she ended up challenging the doctor and a surgeon, and turned out she was right. Good. So we have to listen to that little voice inside of yes. us that says sometimes make that right turn, don't park there. Uh, I remember, you'll, you'll love this story, one time I was uh, down on Laguna Beach, California, and, and this is sort of a scary story, but uh, it just shows how spirit works in your life. I was coming out of a restaurant and I st went, opened the door and took one step and my body went into this um, fear primal fear chill and this was a very unusual experience and I started walking and then I heard a voice and it said you're in danger you're in danger you're in danger it started telling me that there was going to be a car that was going to show up there was going to be a man in the uh, behind the driver's wheel that was going to be wearing this shirt and that uh, was a rapist and uh, it was going to happen, and I needed to be prepared, not to be afraid. The car pulled up. He was behind, and I was crossing the street. And I stopped, and I turned, and I looked at him, and I sent him a, mess a mental message. Don't mess with me. I will not be passive. He backed up and tore down the street, I watched him turn to come around again, and I ran, because my car was in underground parking. Oh. Yes. So I ran, I knew I had enough time to get to my car and to get out of the underground parking, and when he went around the block, he would have recognized me in a car. Uh -huh. But I knew that the voice was saying, don't go the same way that you would go home go another way. And there was a part of me that was arguing with that. But then I realized it had gotten me through that, that situation. Why would I not listen now? Yeah. But that was a situation where my gut feelings and my intuitive experience led me out of a dangerous situation. That has, there's been many other situations in my life where I've been in danger, mm -hmm. where I've been pre-warned and told what to do. So that's another reason to develop these sensory systems. Absolutely. There's so much that you can change, that you can prepare for, that you can address, that you can react appropriately for if you learn to listen to that little voice. And at first it's difficult because it's a little quiet voice and your logic is telling you this and your intellect is telling you that. And to respect and to listen to that little quiet voice is hard at first. But with practice and with dedication, you can. And at the more you listen to that voice, the stronger it becomes, the more you recognize it, and you're able to use it to save your life, probably. So um, there, there really isn't um, a good reason for not practicing and for well, not listening to it. It's and, our birthright. Yeah, this it technology is, is there at yeah. our disposal. Yeah. And in order to develop that keen sense uh, and to get questions answered, with inside of ourselves. That training of slowing yourself mm -hmm. down and actually journaling and asking your inner child in. Uh, they're always willing to talk. Yes. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they're chatty Cathy's or little Johnny's. They're just, they won't shut up. Once they, once they know that you're connecting with them, it, there's a fear to that. Yeah. There's a fear to knowing the truth when you actually know the truth and avoid the truth. So many times then when it starts out and you're training yourself to connect to that deeper, higher self, the answers are yes and no. But other times, and many times, it leads to creating more questions. Yes, it does. And we, we often don't know how to take it to the next step or we're afraid of what that next step is going to take us. The fear of the unknown is very strong. And when we're not 
we've learned in the past that we've made this mistake or that mistake, or unfortunately you may have had somebody in your life that did not respect your boundaries yes. and taught you not to trust yourself and not to believe in yourself. It makes it more and more difficult to believe in yourself and let yourself take that step of faith and head in that direction. But try it anyway. Take that step of faith. Believe in yourself. Well, taking charge of your life yes. means that you have to risk, that you must start trusting your deeper self, and that you have to have the faith mm -hmm. to commit, making it a commitment to slow down to do it. It doesn't happen overnight. And you brought up a point about taking small steps because in the shifting of perception, it is small steps. It took us many, many years to develop non-realities. Yes. So it's going to be those small tap steps that break up those illusions. Yes, and the, the track records that we develop, we see the times that it worked out. Take a look at the times that it might not have worked out also and analyze why. And don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on yourself. I know that in most spiritual beliefs, uh, we are taught to give everything over to spirit. Yeah. But we're also taught, even in some of the most conservative um, spiritual belief systems, that we are to take ownership of our path, to take ownership of our thoughts, of our actions, to take the gifts that we brought with us and that we've been gifted with and make the most out of those and to train and respect the you that is at the core of everything that is functioning in you. Well, I have an analogy that I like to use when I'm working with a client and I ask them, are you in the trunk? Are you in the back seat? Are yes. you in the front seat as a passenger? Or are you driving the vehicle? Yes. Are you thinking of yourself as a Volkswagen when you're a Ferrari? Yes. You can't drive a Ferrari in the, from the trunk. Right, right. And many, and many times we're brought up thinking that we are and will always be a Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. And the uniqueness of the human being is that we're all meant to be a high performance engine. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, we all decided to come and do a particular job and so we prepared for that. And then when we get here, oftentimes well-meaning family and friends and culture tweaks us this way. No, no, little Susie, it's not nice to do that. Little Johnny, it's not nice to do that. By the time they're finished, you've lost who it was you came to be and you've lost belief in yourself. Well, you're programmed. Yes. And to break programming. You've got to take the courage and the faith. Well, sometimes you can't do it's, it by yeah, yourself. Yeah, you, you have to ask for some assistance and some tools. Yes and someone to help you yes. with making um, uh, the, how to make the, the decisions on some of the tools that are gonna give you those yes. small steps. It can be frightening at first, but it's worth it. It's worth the travel. Well, I think if you say, I'm not frightened enough, and you jump, and if you already have this little voice in your head that says, I want to change, I want to have a different life, or I want to do this in my life, then if the fears are going to be what you feed yes. in your thoughts and envisioning, then that's a prayer for what you don't want. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at where the energy is going. What are you feeding? Mm -hmm. I don't think the power of intent can be overstated. Yes. And we are in the driver's sight. Um, yes, we have guides and angels and our God and whatever our belief system is to help and support us. But it's up to us to say, it is my intent. I direct my subconscious to open to these ideas, to open to that small voice. I direct myself to take charge of my life. I want to be 95 years old and look back and say, yes, this was a good run. I did what I came to do. This was a good life. I made choices that some didn't work out, but I kept going. And yes, it's been a good run.